Hi, this is Scott Brown with another Motor Rage Automotive Maintenance and Service Tech Tips video brought to you by BPRO Auto. Next level aftermarket parts that are approved by Mopar and built to fit most makes and models. In this video, we'll be covering alternators and starters and the supporting low voltage systems found on internal combustion engine vehicles. Whether you're a seasoned pro or new to the field, these tips and techniques will help you deliver reliable and efficient service to your clients. Common issues with alternators and starters. Let's start at the core of the electrical system, which is the battery supply and some common issues you might encounter when troubleshooting alternator and starter related symptoms. For alternators, you might see symptoms like dimming lights, headlights, battery warning lights, or strange noises. And for starters, common issues include clicking sounds when trying to start, slow cranking, or no crank conditions. And for vehicles equipped with a start-stop system, you may observe warning messages stating that the start-stop system is unavailable. Regardless, any electrical related problems start with validation of the integrity of the power supply systems. Some vehicles today are equipped with more than one battery, which means that your battery testing techniques may vary. For most vehicles equipped with multiple batteries, you'll need to isolate each in order to properly test them. It has been my experience that most batteries require replacement every three to four years. So if you're addressing a vehicle with an in-service battery beyond that lifespan, consider replacing it. The reason I bring this up is because a marginal battery can lead to failure of both the starter and the alternator, which I will go into further detail later in this video. Testing a battery. Now there are many assessment tools in the field today to assess battery health. Handheld conductance testers are a good choice since they can help assess a battery even if it's in a low state of charge. However, I've been misled by this method, so beware. Another test I prefer to use is an actual load test on the battery, which is gauged against its rated performance. Most batteries supporting a starter motor are rated in cold cranking amps, or CCA, and the rule of thumb here is to load test a fully charged battery with open circuit voltage of 12.6 volts to 50% of its rated cold cranking amperage for 15 seconds. And then we're gonna apply half the cold cranking amp. So this one here says 650. So we're gonna put 325 uh, load on the battery and we're looking to make sure our voltage stays above uh, 9.6. So let's crank this up here. We go up to 325. 325 and we're at 9, 9.6. So I'm gonna call that as a good battery, okay. Another universal test you can perform is an internal resistance measurement. And the way you find this value is not by using your ohmmeter, but rather using a math formula to calculate the internal resistance based off of a known load. 12, 9, 7, we'll write that down. And we'll hook up our same load, okay. We're at 1286, 5.3. 1283, 1282, 1281, 5.3. 12.81, 5.3 amps. And then we'll do the math. All right, we do the math on that. We've got 0.16 divided by point, or 5.3 amps, and that gives us a total of 30 milliohms okay so the 58 milliohms is really kind of outside of a good battery and that that car that battery is a bad battery and this is a new battery and so we'll say 30 milliohms uh, is an okay spec the lower the better but it all depends on the battery design so our next test will be testing the alternator okay so Again, we want to make sure our current probe is zeroed out. And we're going to go around the negative cables here, um, pointing away from the uh, battery. 
and we're going to go ahead and start the engine up. And we're going to actually do two tests here. So we're going to check the voltage drop. We're going to use a voltmeter. So I've got a fluke meter here, voltage settings. Okay. And I want to basically know what the difference is in the ground circuit. So we're going to measure voltage drop on the ground circuit. So I connect my one of my leads to the ground on the battery. And then I'm going to go to the case on the alternator. Right now I have, there's virtually no voltage here, but we, we, we only have about 30 amps or so running on the, on the alternator. So what I will do is I'll start loading this down. I'm gonna load it down to about 12 volts. We're doing 66 amps and we virtually have no, no voltage drop there. So the next test we wanna do is the voltage drop on the power cable okay so i'm going to connect to my b plus at the back of the alternator and then i'm going to hook up my my probe to the positive post on the battery and we're looking for a delta right now we have 151 millivolts okay and again we're going to apply a load we're going to push current across that cable you can see we're doing 65 amps. We're at 0 0.2 volt drop. So that is a, a good cable. Now, if you did that test and you had, say, a volt or two volts, then you're going to want to troubleshoot that circuit between the alternator and the B plus or the power distribution center, because that could be leading, that could cause an alternator charging problem, that could cause uh, multiple alternator failures and so forth. All right, and so now we're going to move on to the starter test. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to go in. I'm going to, I've already identified the starter relay. We're going to pull that relay out. And I'm going to use a tool here that will allow me to run a, a check and actually do a remote start. Okay. And so... One of the things we want to check on this is the ground circuit. We're going to do a voltage drop check on the ground. So I'm going to cook up one lead on ground, the other lead on the negative at the battery. Okay. I'm going to make sure my connection stays intact. Let's make sure I got a good good connection here yep okay so ground to ground so we're basically going to look for any voltage drop on the ground circuit here when we go to crank it so I will take my remote starter crank the engine around okay we're also going to be watching the amperage here to see how many amps and what our voltage is okay and so we'll do all of this testing all in one shot. So 160, 170, 140 amps, 11.3 volts. So we've got a good circuit. Now, if you had a starter that was still cranking slow, you would also want to do the voltage drop check on the positive cable, in the same manner that we did it on the alternator. You would go to the starter, connect one of your leads to your voltmeter, to the starter B plus terminal, and then hook the other one to the battery B plus terminal, and you would go to the crank position. You can use the min max feature on your, your meter in case you're, on, you're not able to watch it. Um, so what I will do here is I'll hit min max on this one. We're still set up to do the ground circuit. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the crank position. Okay. And then we come back after we're tested, we hit min max. We're seeing 0 0.4, 0 0.4 volts, okay? On that ground cable, that's, that should be just fine. Okay, to recap here, what we 
want to verify is that the battery is in good shape. Uh, cold cranking amps, we take half the cold cranking amps, apply that load for 15 seconds. Our voltage should not go below 9.6, but we need to make sure that that battery is fully charged. The other alternative here will be to use a conductance tester, a little handheld tester for ver verification. And, or you can do a battery internal resistance. Not as common, but what you do is you apply a known load to the battery. And in this case, we applied a 50 amp load, okay? We had a 0.7 volt drop. We started at 12.4. We landed at 11.7 .7 with that 50 amps applied. And if we do the math, we take 0.7 divided by 50, and we have 0 0.014, and that's 14 milliohms. That's, a, that's the internal resistance of that battery. So that would be a good battery with a lead-acid battery. The next one is we did our alternator test, okay? And so we're, we're measuring the current, but we want to apply a load to the battery so that the alternator can actually output some current. And we were, we were pushing out maybe 50 or 60 amps, but what we do is we take our, our meter, our voltmeter, and we go here to the B plus, and then on the other side of this, we come over here to B plus, okay? So our two leads are measuring the difference or the voltage dropped in this circuit. And we shouldn't have more than say a half a volt, okay? We can do the same on the ground side. Just hook our lead, hook our lead to ground there, okay? And then we move this one over to the ground, okay? And then we do, we do another load test and that, that, that was very minimal. So we're looking for a very, very low voltage. If you have high voltage, that means that you've got high resistance in, the, in that ground circuit, okay? And then over here for our starter, same thing. Um, we wanna know what is the voltage drop between here, okay? and right there, okay? So you take your lead, you come over, you go back to your B plus, you crank it over, so during cranking, and you would wanna hit your min-max button here on, the, on your tool, min-max, and you're looking for, uh, most rule of thumb says 0.2 volts or so, um, so 0.2 to, it depends on how much current's flowing, but 0.2 to 0.4, that should be fine. And then you can do the same on the ground, just like we did before. Just come here, go to the case, move your lead. We take this lead. We just take our lead and move it over to the ground, okay? And then again, you do your cranking, all that current's flowing, you're looking for a delta on that ground of no more than say two, uh, 0 0.2 volts. And that is how you check the fundamentals of battery starter and charging systems. Now, a couple more things here to talk about on the alternators and starters. So uh, the B-Pro Auto alternators are a high quality product. They are focused on delivering high quality products into the marketplace. Uh, one thing you should be aware of is the fact that some of these systems have special pulley drive systems. Uh, this one, for example, it has a one-way clutch. So as I rotate this and stop the pulley, you'll see that the rotor fan there continues to rotate slightly. So that's because we have a one-way clutch, okay? And that one-way clutch is there for the system operation so that we reduce the noise, vibration, and harshness that occurs in the belt drive system when other loads are being applied to it. Uh, secondarily, when you come to diagnosis, these alternators are typically driven or commanded on or controlled by the PCM. So you have control circuits here that you'll need a capable scan tool or multimeter or sometimes an oscilloscope uh, is necessary to troubleshoot uh, these systems to understand, hey, am I receiving a command to charge and it's just failing or what have you? And then again, this is our B plus terminal that we measured our voltage drop on earlier. So. That's, uh, that's the alternator. On the starter, as we mentioned earlier on start-stop systems, starters are special on these vehicles. They have a, uh, a duty cycle, an expected end-of-life duty cycle that the PCM is tracking. So um, two points here. When you do replace the starter, you wanna make sure you're using a high-quality starter like a B-Pro Auto. 
And two, you're going to need to go into the scan tool, and as per service information, you're going to reset the counts in the PCM for the amount of starts that are happening. Okay. And then on the back of the starter, this is a solenoid actuated uh, starter. This is our B plus terminal. So this is the test point that we would connect our meter to. And then the other end of the meter would go on the B plus post. And you would put your meter in min max. And when you go to crank it, you're going to crank and then stop and go back to your meter and look for that maximum voltage drop. So you want less than, typically you want less than a half a volt uh, on this circuit. If you have anything higher, you're going to need to start troubleshooting that voltage drop because that is contributing to poor starter performance. Well, that's all for now. I hope you found this video both interesting and informative. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.